Pay close attention. What you're about to see is Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Welcome to another edition of YPN News, bringing you the news that relates to Bible prophecy and foretold by Yeshua Hawkins. Well, in the news today, we have the U.S. continuing to outspend everyone else when it comes to their military spending. We'll right. have those details. Mm -hmm. Also, President Donald Trump uh, putting the blame once again on China, not only for the coronavirus, but actually a couple other problems that the U.S. is facing, mm -hmm. saying mm -hmm. it's China's fault. Right. And uh, also nationwide protests mm -hmm. over the death of one man. We'll have all those details and many more. But first, the CDC has evidence to believe the spread of the coronavirus in communities began in late January or early February, going undetected for over a month. Now, the death toll climbed past 100,000 in the U.S. today, stopping at 102,500 victims. Now, it was also Florida's largest spike in cases uh, for more than a month. Now, currently, there are 1.7 million confirmed cases nationwide. Hmm. Well, uh, there has been a deliberate slow reopening of the world's largest hot zones, including New York, uh, the U.S. epicenter for the pandemic. Uh, phase two in five upstate regions has begun. Uh, this includes businesses like offices, retail and hair salons, all opening on a limited service basis. Governor Andrew Cuomo has said no parties just yet, limiting occupancy to 50% at this time. Well, and as researchers and scientists race for a vaccine, President Trump has declared America is back in business regardless of one. Now, truckers were protesting during President Trump's uh, most recent press conference from the Rose Garden. They honked their horns and held signs in disagreement with government policies mm. over COVID-19. Now, the honking was so loud, the president could not hear reporters' questions, even at one time turning to his side and saying, what did she say? Hmm. Interesting. Well, Trump tried using uh, it to his advantage, though, saying, by that beautiful sound, those are truckers who are with us all the way. Well, that's interesting. Uh, the president and his team announced they would soon have a vaccine for the coronavirus. Uh, the president called it Operation Warp speed, which he said means big and it means fast. But regardless of whether scientists come through with a vaccine or not, the president says America is reopening. Now he said, quote, vaccine or no vaccine, we're back and we're starting the process. And in many cases, they don't have vaccines and a virus or a flu comes and you just fight through it. Well, however, some states are extending their stay at home orders. New York made the announcement today that it will continue theirs until June the 13th. And yeah. of course, we know New York was one of the uh, hot spots there for a while. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Well, the coronavirus is being overtaken in the news by a new epidemic in the United States as the National Guard has been mobilized to handle protests that got out of hand. The violence erupted overnight over the death of a Minneapolis man named George Floyd. Frustrations arose due to the officers involved not immediately being charged with murdering Floyd. Well, protesters looted stores and set buildings on fire to show they had had enough of the injustice in the system. Police responded with tear gas and rubber bullets. Despite the pushback, riots continued into the next day, spreading from Minneapolis into St. Paul. Now crowds there ransacked shops and smashed police car windshields. Hmm. Well, things have gotten so bad that they had to evacuate Minnesota's state capital. This is an added stress on the northern state as millions of Americans continue to lose their jobs due to COVID-19 shutdowns. Again, this week, another 2.1 million Americans filed for unemployment benefits. Well, getting back to the protests uh, there less than 24 hours earlier, Minneapolis looked like any big city in the U.S., busy and blooming. But since the violent outburst, it has turned uh, to the site. It looked like a site of a war zone. Mm. Now, as the dawn came, firefighters were finally able to come put out the flames of burning buildings before they spread to more buildings. 
Now, there were also businesses turned to piles of rubble still smoldering. Yeah, because the firefighters aren't going to really put their lives at risk right. to put out a fire because those rioters, you just don't, you don't know what their intentions are and what they would even do to, um, you know, first responders or those type of personnel. Right. Well, at the site of George Floyd's death, protests were peaceful, but three miles away near the precinct where the four officers were worked, uh, excuse me, they worked, that were involved in Floyd's death, protests turned into vandalism. At least 30 fires were reported across the city and one man was killed by a shop owner. Looters are still hitting businesses and more police vehicles are being destroyed. This is why the National Guard has been called in to uh, bring things to a halt. Well, CBS News journalists talked to one store owner who had invested his life savings to open a sports bar. Now, he was trying to clean up from the destruction of the angry mob when a few people came back trying to steal his safe. Now, devastated and in tears, the man told reporters, I don't know what I'm going to do. I worked so hard to get here, so hard. And really, your heart goes out to him because, um, you know, it wasn't, he didn't have anything to do right. with the situation that caused the death of George Floyd, but mm -hmm. yet he was just on the end of receiving this uh, violence there wrecking his shop and as he said everything he's worked for what's he going to do yeah now the now that area is going to have to reel back from all mm -hmm. that uh impulsive violence and the protest and you know it's going to take a while before things get back on their feet and the people who were involved in that they're going to feel the effects of that as well right. well despite their efforts four days after mr floyd's death city leaders have been unable to calm tensions let alone stop the violence one local community activist spike moss told cbs news violence does not help but what it does is let everyone know that people are tired. Tired, he said, of being oppressed, being misused, being abused, being murdered at will. Well, we now turn to our field correspondent, Larry McGee, who has more on these nationwide protests. But first, he has a story on Hong Kong and what uh, China, some of the stipulations China is going to put upon Hong Kong and how the U.S. Mm -hmm. has responded to that. Larry, what is the latest going on? with Hong Kong and what is uh, the United States and China both saying? Wherever there is division, there is also suspicion. So that along with all of the divisions among men and the nations today, there is also with it the distrustful and suspicious eye forever prowling and prying for a just cause to fight. Very soon after a proposal to batten down on Hong Kong and increase military spending was announced in the Chinese Congress, the U.S. swiftly responded with condemnation. The measure is said to have been crafted to target and address treason and sedition, but protests have arisen in Hong Kong for the belief that the newly proposed legislation undermines Hong Kong's freedom under the one country, two systems principle. The uprisings to resist Beijing's efforts had already been in progress months ago, but had been prevented due to lockdowns related to the coronavirus. Chinese officials say the move is designed to block and curtail foreign interference in the region and that the issue is purely a Chinese affair and no foreign country has the right to intervene. Beijing says the Chinese government is determined in safeguarding its national sovereignty, security, and development interests in line with the one country, two systems policy and in opposing any external interference in Hong Kong affairs. The chief executive for Hong Kong, Ms. Carrie Lam, has stated that she sees no threat in the proposal with regard to Hong Kong's freedoms. But U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo released a statement saying that the United States strongly urges Beijing to reconsider its disastrous proposal, abide by its international obligations and respect Hong Kong's high degree of autonomy, democratic institutions, and civil liberties, which are key to preserving a special status under U.S. law. There has been a belief from the outset that Washington has had a hand in the uprisings taking place in Hong Kong as much as it's had in other places where it has used the same tactic to produce social instability and topple governments. At this point, however, it is no longer a matter of question, with the current administration backing the Hong Kong protesters openly and the protesters themselves waving American flags. America itself is grappling with waves of protests following the publicized deaths of yet two more citizens at the hands of police. The two latest incidents involved African Americans in Louisville, Kentucky and Minneapolis, Minnesota. One was shot to death in a botched drug raid and the other, George Floyd, was essentially suffocated as officers kneeled on his neck and back and prevented his breathing. 
Demonstrations are now taking place all over the U.S. and citizens voice frustration and outrage with regard to lingering inequalities, which some don't see as having progressed much since the days of Jim Crow and before. The family of Breonna Taylor, the young lady who died after being shot eight times in the drug raid, are now crying out for peace while there is violence erupting in other areas, their respectable chan is. We are tired of fighting. For YPN News, I'm Larry McGee. Good time, Jeff. Back to you. Um, yeah, it's, it's sad to see how, how fast that took off and with the protest and really, um, you know, these things turning violent, they're not really solving problems. You know, protesting the things that, that you're against in hopes for justice is one thing, but when they start getting violent, you know, that's when it, it kind of adds fuel to the fire. Right, and as uh, Larry reported, with so many sitting see, cities seeing these protests, it, it's a... Uh, It'll be interesting to see how long they continue, how long are people going to keep mm -hmm. up this type of protest. Yeah, the resources are used to help to keep things calm too as mm -hmm. well, which we takes from the city amid COVID-19. Well, the relationship between the United States and China has been on the rocks lately and the tensions are increasing even more. President Trump recently gave a speech declaring that relationship and new measures that the U.S. is planning to put into place regarding trade, technology, and several other things concerning China. Well, let's take a look at the following video on what the president had to say regarding that matter. I'm here today to talk about our relationship with China and several new measures to protect American security and prosperity. China's pattern of misconduct is well known. For decades, they've ripped off the United States like no one has ever done before. Hundreds of billions of dollars a year were lost dealing with China, especially over the years during the prior administration. China raided our factories, offshored our jobs, gutted our industries, stole our intellectual property, and violated their commitments under the World Trade Organization. To make matters worse, they are considered a developing nation getting all sorts of benefits that others, including the United States, are not entitled to. But I have never solely blamed China for this. They were able to get away with the theft like no one was able to get away with before because of past politicians and, frankly, past presidents. But unlike those who came before, my administration negotiated and fought for what was right. It's called fair and reciprocal treatment. China has also unlawfully claimed territory in the Pacific Ocean, threatening freedom of navigation and international trade. And they broke their word to the world on ensuring the autonomy of Hong Kong. The United States wants an open and constructive relationship with China, but achieving that relationship requires us to vigorously defend our national interests. The Chinese government has continually violated its promises to us and so many other nations. These plain facts cannot be overlooked or swept aside. The world is now suffering as a result of the malfeasance of the Chinese government. China's cover-up of the Wuhan virus allowed the disease to spread all over the world, instigating a global pandemic that has cost more than 100,000 American lives and over a million lives worldwide. Chinese officials ignored their reporting obligations to the World Health Organization and pressured the World Health Organization to mislead the world when the virus was first discovered by Chinese authorities. Countless lives have been taken and profound economic hardship has been inflicted all around the globe. They strongly recommended against me doing the early ban from China, but I did it anyway and was proven to be 100 percent correct. China has total control over the World Health Organization, despite only paying $40 million per year compared to what the United States has been paying, which is approximately $450 million a year. We have detailed the reforms that it must make and engage with them directly, but they have refused to act. Because they have failed to make the requested and greatly needed reforms, 
We will be today terminating our relationship with the World Health Organization and redirecting those funds to other worldwide and deserving urgent global public health needs. The world needs answers from China on the virus. We must have transparency. Why is it that China shut off infected people from Wuhan to all other parts of China? It went nowhere else. It didn't go to Beijing. It went nowhere else. But they allowed them to freely travel throughout the world, including Europe and the United States. The death and destruction caused by this is incalculable. We must have answers, not only for us, but for the rest of the world. This pandemic has underscored the crucial importance of building up America's economic independence, reshoring our critical supply chains, and protecting America's scientific and technological advances. For years, the government of China has conducted illicit espionage to steal our industrial secrets, of which there are many. Today, I will issue a proclamation to better secure our nation's vital university research and to suspend the entry of certain foreign nationals from China who we have identified as potential security risks. I am also taking action to protect the integrity of America's financial system, by far the best in the world. I am instructing my presidential working group on financial markets to study the differing practices of Chinese companies listed on the U.S. financial markets with the goal of protecting American investors. Investment firms should not be subjecting their clients to the hidden and undue risks associated with financing Chinese companies that do not play by the same rules. Americans are entitled to fairness and transparency. Several of the most significant actions we're taking pertain to deeply troubling situations unfolding in Hong Kong. This week, China unilaterally imposed control over Hong Kong security. This was a plain violation of Beijing's treaty obligations with the United Kingdom in the Declaration of 1984 and explicit provisions of Hong Kong's basic law. It has 27 years to go. The Chinese government's move against Hong Kong is the latest in a series of measures that are diminishing the city's long-standing and very proud status. This is a tragedy for the people of Hong Kong, the people of China, and indeed the people of the world. China claims it is protecting national security. But the truth is that Hong Kong was secure and prosperous as a free society. Beijing's decision reverses all of that. It extends the reach of China's invasive state security apparatus into what was formerly a bastion of liberty. China's latest incursion, along with other recent developments that degraded the territory's freedoms, makes clear that Hong Kong is no longer sufficiently autonomous to warrant the special treatment that we have afforded the territory since the handover. China has replaced its promised formula of one country, two systems, with one country, one system. Therefore, I am directing my administration to begin the process of eliminating policy exemptions that give Hong Kong different and special treatment. My announcement today will affect the full range of agreements we have with Hong Kong, from our extradition treaty to our export controls, on dual-use technologies and more, with few exceptions. We will be revising the State Department's travel advisory for Hong Kong to reflect the increased danger of surveillance and punishment by the Chinese state security apparatus. We will take action to revoke Hong Kong's preferential treatment as a separate customs and travel territory from the rest of China. The United States will also take necessary steps to sanction PRC and Hong Kong officials directly or indirectly involved in eroding Hong Kong's autonomy and, so, and just, if you take a look, smothering, absolutely smothering Hong Kong's freedom. Our actions will be strong, 
our actions will be meaningful. More than two decades ago, on a rainy night in 1997, British soldiers lowered the Union flag and Chinese soldiers raised the Chinese flag in Hong Kong. The people of Hong Kong felt simultaneously proud of their Chinese heritage and their unique Hong Kong identity. The people of Hong Kong hoped that in the years and decades to come, China would increasingly come to resemble its most radiant and dynamic city. The rest of the world was electrified by a sense of optimism that Hong Kong was a glimpse into China's future, not that Hong Kong would grow into a reflection of China's past. In every decision, I will continue to proudly defend and protect the workers, families, and citizens of the United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, as we just saw there, uh, you know, those type of words from President Trump against China definitely not helping the relationship that is already very tense between two superpowers. Right. Uh, now, actually, China receiving more of the brunt of the blame for mm -hmm. certain problems in the United States and especially the COVID-19 outbreak. That's right. Well, despite the declining economy as a result of the coronavirus, one particular industry is booming, the American arms industry. And the U.S. president is making sure that the coronavirus does not interfere. Now, in the past few months, the U.S. has raised tensions between China and Iran. Uh, airstrikes in Somalia have intensified. America has provoked Russia with the deployment of warships towards Poland and U.S. warships sailed towards China. Hmm. Regarding China, the U.S. has made the uh, situation worse by approving the sales of torpedoes to Taiwan for $180 million. Well, China said that it opposes weapons sales to Taiwan. Well, in total, the U.S. weapons sales to foreign entities has totaled $180 billion. President Trump has made sure that COVID-19 does not interfere with weapons manufacturing, de manufacturing, declaring weapons companies as essential industries, along with doctors, nurses, and food producers, by adding defense industry personnel employed in form ar foreign arms sales to that list of essential workers. Well, President Trump boasted about the U.S. military, saying that We've spent $1.5 trillion on the military. We have the strongest military that we've ever had. We have the best equipment, the best missiles, planes, the best of everything. Now, according to the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, uh, the U.S. has the, the biggest or actually was the biggest defense spender in 2019, comprising 38% of the global military spending. Now, the Pentagon released its 2020 budget at $705 billion, slightly less than last year, focusing on spending on weapons that can combat countries with nuclear weapons, such as China and, of course, Russia. Hmm. Well, the U.S. arms industry is pushing sales close to $1 trillion when international and domestic sales are taken into consideration and combined. Even though COVID-19 is putting a strain on the nation, the weapons industry workforce is growing with Northrop Grumman planning to add 10,000 workers to its workforce. Raytheon plans to add 2,000. Boeing, who just laid off thousands from its civilian wing, is planning to add hundreds to its military and security side of its business. And the world's largest uh, uh, weapons manufacturers, arms dealer Lockheed Martin, uh, added over 2,300 jobs with the intention of adding another 4,600 workers. Well, while some see national defense as essential, many are wondering how manufacturing weapons uh, for foreign entities are helping U.S. interests and they actually blurred while people are put at risk manufacturing weapons as the coronavirus continues to be a threat making their priorities of the U.S. blurred to its own citizens. So once again wondering, hey, how come we're putting ourselves at risk while we're manufacturing weapons that are going to be given to foreign entities? Right, right. And it's, you mentioned blurred, you know, the the things are blurred in many people's minds regarding, you know, what's necessary to be done for a long time there regarding COVID-19. Uh, we just talked about the protests. You know, many people are, are declaring or desiring or demanding, in fact, justice, uh, you know, with the brutality and the oppression that we see take place with many uh, people throughout the United States and the world. And of course, you know, the U.S. is continually pushing 
you know, the, the, the finger into the chest of China, uh, edging them closer to a point where they've already made the statement that we will push back, we will fight back if we're pushed far enough. And so we're seeing that build on a global scale and it's creating a lot of tension uh, for the global economy, but also we're, we know that uh, war is going to be very imminent very soon. And that's one thing that, that Yishro Hawkins of the House of Yahweh has been teaching for many years, that the end of this is going to bring about nuclear war that's going to lead to approximately four-fifths of mankind being destroyed as a result. Well, you don't have to be caught up into that four-fifths, but could possibly be in that one-fifth remaining alive. If you'd like to find out more of what you need to do to prepare and to protect yourself and your family, contact the House of Yahweh. And when you do, don't forget to request your free copies of the monthly newsletter and the Prophetic Word magazine. Here's how. To contact the House of Yahweh, you can write them at the House of Yahweh, P.O. Box 2498, Abilene, Texas, 79604. You can call them at 1-800-613-9494. Visit them on any of their websites by going to Yahweh.com, YeshraHawkins.com, or Yahweh'sBranch.com. You can also visit our website by going to YPNNews.com. If you would like to email the House of Yahweh, you can do so by emailing info at Yahweh.com. Any international calls, you can call the number that's on your screen now. And once again, don't forget to check out two absolutely free study tools, Bible study tools on the market, the Usual Says program by going to usualsays.com and the Ask Usual program by going to askusual.com. And if you're unfamiliar with these programs, you can go there. There's actually a video tutorial to show you how to use the program. It's very simple. Type in your question and wait for your results to pop up. Well, don't go anywhere. Get your Holy Scriptures and a pen and something to write on, some paper, because up next for some very informative, beneficial, life-saving information is Yisro Hawkins. For all of us here at YPN News, I'm Katana Alexander. And I'm Jeffrey Harmon. Thank you for watching. Yeah.